Um, Danielle, thank you so much for joining us today at the SMB Tech Summit. Uh, I'd love to start things off with your background and have you tell us more about Gloss Genius. Happy to be here. So I'm Danielle, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Gloss Genius. Gloss Genius is a software payments company for small business owners in the beauty and wellness space. So we help a small business owner like a salon owner or a spa owner manage their whole entire back office through a end-to-end -end suite of functionality that makes it easy and fun for them to be successful. Very cool. Um, what first got you excited about that space and salons and spas and how did that lead you to start the company? Good question. So. Uh, the inspiration for Gloss Genius came uh, as a few areas of interest for myself collided. When I was in college, I was doing makeup artistry more so just out of a passion. And I firsthand saw some of the pain of managing client relationships and a business. At the same time, I was also very interested with retail POS. And I had started a company. Um, we were doing uh, basically digital receipts app product that would digitize receipts at the point of sale. And I was very interested by um, point of sale and transaction information that could be collected to um, you know, effectively empower businesses at the point of sale and, and as part of parties to those transactions. I also had a technical background. So you know, I, just three areas of interest came together and ultimately allowed me to do what I'm doing right now, which is start Gloss Genius, which is, as I mentioned before, effectively a uh, software, you know, hybrid payments company that encompasses many of those areas of interest. Awesome. Very cool. Um, and how has that changed over the past, you know, three and three to five years and what what's kept you going and keeps you going today? So I, it's interesting as we've grown, you know, demand for our product in areas um, even outside of, you know, salon ownership and spa ownership, um, has grown. And I think this is just nature of SMB software and having a product that business owners talk about. And so when I think about something that's changed a lot over the last three to five years is even just the surface area of the beauty wellness industry that we are serving right now. And we, you know, see, we have the opportunity to serve, um, you know, naturally capabilities of the product have, uh, you know, been expanded and, I think we're building a really powerful platform. So over the last few years, we've had time to deepen um, the power and effectively the impact we're having on small business owners in our space. In terms of what keeps me going every day, I think it's customers. Um, you know, we're impacting them in, in many ways and changing more than just their businesses. We're changing their lives and we're impacting um, not only how they're showing up at work, but also how you know they're showing up in areas outside of work because we're taking some of the stress and hardship away from running a small business and making it much easier and much more fun. Very cool, it makes a lot of sense. Um, one thing that, that's actually I thought is really unique and cool about uh, Gloss Genius is that you, uh, you were bootstrapped until relatively recently. So how is that um, why did you decide to do that? How has that impacted your trajectory um, and how you've grown the business? Yeah, it's interesting to have seen both sides. So as you mentioned, we were primarily bootstrapped. We had a mm. tiny amount of seed capital um, in the beginning. And um, for a large part of the company's history, we had been revenue financed. And, you know, the time at which we went to go raise around, we had, uh, you know, a far more mature revenue profile than most companies of our stage and size. And so, I think reflecting on what that helped us do early on, it goes back to customers and just being maniacally focused around having a product that customers actually love using and it's actually really helping them. And it's easy to get distracted with things that don't matter and losing focus. But the fact that we were bootstrapped initially, I think, you know, almost required this maniacal focus on customers and the business and things that um, we were focusing on the business at an earlier point in time, such as unit economics of mm -hmm. what does it mean to service a customer and, you know, in the longer term, how does this business evolve and grow from, um, you know, obviously an attractive unit economic basis to where we are now into something much more attractive in the future. You know, on the topic of raising capital, I've also seen firsthand how that helps do, um, you know, on my end, doing things a little bit faster 
And especially because right now, one of the biggest areas of focus for us is building the team and attracting top tier talent to the team. Mm -hmm. Um, I can see firsthand the benefits of raising capital and getting the message out to more than just a you know, small group of people that know the fundamentals of the business and, and getting a broader message out about um, you know, the company, what you're doing, and um, you know, the fact that other investors have chosen to um, validate the company in, in the way that institutional capital often does. So I have seen both worlds and there's um, you know, obvious advantages to, to um, you know, bootstrapping, obvious advantages to raising. And um, I think for founders that can be able to navigate both successfully, it, it kind of leads to an interesting outcome for the strength of the product and the product being able to, um, you know, foster growth, you know, just by virtue of how much customers love it and talk about it. Totally. Totally. Having market pull like that is awesome. Um, how, uh, so... How do you think about, um, to go back to the topic of the, of the panel, like how do you think about being mission driven as it applies to your work um, and to Gloss Genius? Like why you know, is the SMB tech space especially exciting for mission driven companies um, and how has that become a competitive advantage for you? Yeah, I think about this a lot. So taking a step back, I think about what does it mean to be a mission driven company? And in my mind, there's basically three different types of companies out there. There's one type of company in which um, you know the company exists because there's a business opportunity. There's another type of company out there in which the company exists not only because there's a business opportunity, but there's also some kind of added mission. And so, you know, maybe a good example of that is a company that you would buy a product from, and because you buy a product from this company, they'll donate something to some cause. And so, there's some mission or um, larger purpose that that transaction is helpful for. Mm -hmm. And then the third type, which I think really are um, what I would define as mission-driven companies, are companies that are driven by the mission and where the mission itself has a direct impact on um, how the product and the company evolves. And so, you know, I think back to our company specifically, and when I think about what it means to be a mission-driven company, you know, our mission to empower um, small business owners to be successful, the things we work on inside the product have to make small business owners successful yeah. and they're deeply ingrained in doing so. And so it's not that we're pursuing some extraneous business opportunity and we're you know donating something to help small business owners, the product itself and what we spend our whole entire day working on is facilitating and furthering that mission. Totally. Um, you alluded to, to uh, hiring and the importance of getting great people before. Um, how has uh, being mission driven, or I guess finding people who align with that mission, um, affected your your hiring? I think it's added a little bit of complexity to our hiring, but it also has helped us evaluate uh, candidates to be the right fit culturally and also align with the mission. And I think some of the most successful hires we've made are the ones that um, came, you know, bursting into the door, so excited about the mission because they could kind of understand how to connect all of the dots across the company. And, you know, in terms of tactically how that's affected our hiring, we have competency interviews, not only for a skill set, but also for um, how does someone fit in with the culture here? How does someone align with the mission? Mm -hmm. And it's caused us to think critically, not only about um, skill set of certain candidates that are interested in, in being a part of the team, but also the broader fit that these candidates may have with the mission overall. Mm -hmm. And it's given, um, you know, a lot of color for us to, uh, you know, evaluate candidates through and also a, um, you know, strong sense of unity with the team as we hire more mission-driven people that um, are all excited to be doing what we're doing here today. Very cool. That makes a lot of sense. Um, to, to zoom out a bit and focus on market trends. So how um, you know, has being mission-driven helped you uh, navigate uh, COVID? Yeah. So, you know, being mission-driven, I think is um, particularly exciting in the SMB tech space because, you know, their success, small business owner success is your success. And when it comes down to a time like COVID, when there's so many decisions you have to make, 
um, in such a short amount of time, you get an interesting and, and useful framework to evaluate some of those decisions and ultimately make decisions much more effectively. And it comes down to what could we be doing right now to set our customers up for success, not just tomorrow, but in the next few months, next few years and beyond. And when you approach the decisions that you have to make with that framework, um, you know, I think it it helped us navigate COVID certainly. And the bottom line of their success is our success helped us do things like reprioritize um, items on the roadmap that we would have done later and now we're moving them up or, um, you know, get into mm -hmm. helping customers understand things about their business that they didn't before. Um, prop up educational resources. We turned the whole entire customer success team overnight into, um, you know, a incredibly useful, um, you know, kind of extension of small business customers, um, businesses themselves to help them understand how to navigate um, the world of loans and aid that they could have possibly been getting during COVID. And all of this kind of boiled down to their success being our success. And it was a really, um, you know, incredible time to rally the troops and our team too around that mission and a good reminder of just how deeply felt that mission can be at the company and how much of an impact it can have with customers in our ecosystem. So it sounds like uh, you were able to marshal the troops and build a really robust community around the product. Um, can you talk more about that? Yeah, we put a lot of resources together and in many ways we took it a step further and built this community that helped us deepen relationships with customers. Mm -hmm. Resources we put together were anything and everything from how to navigate um, the CARES Act with the PPP, loans available to small businesses, to how to apply for them, how to get um, reporting done, how to understand things about your business to make this whole entire process much easier, mm -hmm. how to connect with other business owners that may be experiencing the same thing at the same time, and other ideas and thoughts that helped business owners be more entrepreneurial during this time. So how to service clients or how to communicate with clients or how to maintain and deepen client relationships, um, you know, at a moment where every business owner felt like they were, you know, getting farther and farther away from clients as shutdowns forced them mm -hmm. to um, cancel many, you know, kind of visits they had with clients. So this whole world of resources and um, community we put together that I think really helped our business owners navigate COVID and the shutdowns that much better and also feel um, that much more connected to our brand as well. That's awesome. I love that. Um, how has... Uh... Do you think COVID has changed the landscape at all for uh, SMB software? Yeah, you know, I think it's one of these things where COVID has accelerated many of the things we would have already seen happening over the next few years. And particularly with the landscape of um, small business owners, many of them are still on pen and paper. And this is something that has been changing, but COVID has certainly been an accelerant to many small business owners thinking about working smarter, not harder, and primarily working smarter through the use of really effective digital platforms and tools that can help centralize their whole entire set of operations. And one of the things I think COVID has done is help small business owners that were predominantly using pen and paper solutions really understand the promise of digitization and get over the hump a little bit in terms of the fear they had around digitizing a lot of their businesses. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so so you think overall it's uh, increased SMB tech adoption. Um, what uh, What's your sense for like SMB sentiment on the ground uh, about a recovery or how the recovery is going? It absolutely has increased SMB tech adoption. In terms of the SMB uh, sentiment on the ground, I think there's a saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And for the small business owners in this space that have navigated, um, you know, a few very tumultuous months in 2020 and have emerged as much stronger, better business owners, um, in terms of the sentiment, I think small business owners are excited about the client demand that they're seeing and is continuing to increase as more and more people get comfortable with, um, you know, doing more and more um, client service visits and, and a greater return to normalcy. And so 
But on that topic, small business owners are excited because they feel like they also have learned a lot and, and have in many ways kind of accelerated what they would have already been doing for their businesses over the next few years into a shorter period of time. And um, many small business customers on our platform have grown their businesses because they're um, thinking about ways to run their business more efficiently and other um, areas of service that they weren't necessarily doing before uh, Corona. So sentiment is positive and uh, I think small business customers are excited about um, the idea of local continuing to thrive. Awesome. We are too. Uh, what, uh, what, um, what sort of uh, greater secular trends are you seeing in this market aside from just COVID or, or digital acceleration or adoption? It could be SMB broadly. It could also be specific to your vertical. So I'll touch on a few things. With um, SMB, I think we, there's an obvious secular trend that we're seeing of just um, more and more technology adoption. More small business owners are um, less afraid to start to digitize their whole entire set of um, business operations. And that, in addition to another trend we're seeing, um, you know, which is in some part driven by the demand we see from small business owners to digitize more and more of their operations is greater centralization that can be afforded to many small business owners on a single platform. And I think that's a trend that's here and is only going to continue to get bigger, um, particularly because of just the value of integration and the benefits you could drive to small business owners that are juggling many, many different priorities um, in addition to you know the rebound and, and post post corona recovery, and in our space, um, you know we're seeing that in addition to other things that customers have gravitated to um, and started to expand their businesses. So whether it's they're selling more products or they're doing more virtual consults with clients initially to save more time for both themselves and clients in terms of travel time to and from a particular location mm -hmm. um, and also being open to other alternative means of visits that can ultimately help a small business owner expand their potential reach or business opportunities, such as a house call, for example. Um, some of these trends we've seen definitely uh, pick up during Corona, and I think that they're here to stay for small business owners that are thinking about unique ways to expand their client offerings. Yeah, that makes total sense. I think uh, what, what other stuff are you hearing from your customers and what sort of changes um, do you expect to see going forward in the SMB tech market? So increased centralization, um, I think this is going to be something that we'll continue to see. And also as uh, small business owners continue to juggle many more things uh, and they realize the promise of digitization and the value of integration, we're going to start to see more and more demand for centralization. Mm. Um, we already have in many ways. We're also seeing a lot of demand from customers um, just for tools that are easier and easier to use. Um, you know, I think many small business customers are consumers in many ways, and they're you know used to using consumer tech products that are very yeah. easy to use. And so, uh, you know, we're getting a lot of demand and hearing from a lot of small business customers about things in their world that could be much easier to use and do through technology that right now, maybe there are technical solutions, but they're hard to use, they're clunky, they're legacy. And I think there's a lot of opportunity for continued consumerization of SMB technology. Totally. Actually, that's a, like, um, so the bar, it's interesting. Um, the prosumer space is, is really neat and you guys are kind of playing in that and that, um, you know, consumer tech has set the bar super high for UX and UI and just overall usability. Um, can you talk about uh, kind of the early days or even right now in, of your product development and how you how you tackled that of just democratizing, sort of bringing down the barrier, um, you know, to access to financial and back office tools? Yeah, and we still have more work to do there, too, right, in terms of our overall mission of helping small business owners be successful and in some way democratizing access to, um, you know, success for small business owners. Things that we did were... Um, taking a step back, we are still maniacal about talking to customers and understanding, um, you know, areas of their business, things that they need, things that they need, but maybe alternative solutions are um, possibly not considered because they're not affordable. And so we take a step back and we think, 
well, how can we make these more affordable? How can we make them more accessible for small business owners? How can we make them easier to use? And then we'll kind of go down this path of doing um, a whole lot of customer uh, chats, customer conversations, one-on-ones, feedback group sessions, surveys. Um, we'll observe customers, how they use products. We'll track customers and how they use certain, um, you know, versions of a product or a feature that's been released. And we'll get really granular information on what we think are barriers to usage um, that, you know, we can knock down with, um, you know, effective design. And then another area of what do we think are barriers to usage that we can knock down with ways to make the platform more and more affordable for small business owners. Mm -hmm. So where can we find opportunities, um, you know, to make a product more affordable for small business owners where we don't have to have a heavy, large sales team where instead we could rely on product-led growth and relying on product-led growth in some way, you know, could make the product more affordable for business owners because, um, distribution is more affordable for us as a business. And so we can reinvest that back into customers and the product experience. We think about a lot of those things at the company and it all just comes down to customer feedback and being on the ground with, um, you know, customer thoughts, suggestions, intel and discovery conversations. Awesome. Uh, customer centricity, very important. Um, what a, what sorts of insights do you might you have for um, other founders who might be doing similar things, whether it's around like your vertical specifically around S and B tech, around you know the switch from being bootstrapped to to then raising funding, like really anything? I think for founders starting out, nail the product and really focus on getting to product market fit whether you're approaching your business from a bootstrap basis or um, raising outside uh, you know, VC capital, getting to product market fit faster is ultimately going to be better for the business. And you do those things when you focus on customers and being maniacal about delivering an incredible customer experience that in a way just helps the product sell itself. So that's one of my biggest sources, pieces of advice for um, you know people that are thinking about you know, kind of an opportunity in the SMB tech landscape and even outside opportunities too. I don't think this necessarily applies to the SMB tech landscape. The other thing I would um, encourage everyone to do is um, think about, you know, going one step further to making sure the business has great unit economics from the beginning. And if you're starting from good, then you know, in the future, you can only go to great. And so thinking about the fundamentals of the business, because one day into the future, you're going to need to care about the fundamentals and, um, you know, caring about those things. And you don't have to obsess over them in the beginning, but just having a good pulse on them um, definitely sets a business and company up for success later down the road. And then the third thing I would say is just customers, 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 um, obsess over customers and their experience. And um, I think the rest, the rest becomes much easier to follow when you have a product that is helping customers, delighting customers and, um, you know, serving a core need of theirs in a very deep and profound way. Um, the rest of the business in many ways just become details. Awesome. Very cool. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us today at SMB Tech Summit, uh, remote, virtual. Uh, we really appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. Seriously. Thank you so much. Thank you.